Let's now talk about the last basic operation on singly linked list. And don't forget, we actually talked about five other basic operations on singly linked list earlier. Let's recap what they are. We first talk about how to count the number of nodes, get size, and also how to get to the last node in the list, like a get tail. And also we talk about how you can add an elements to the uh, to the front of the list. That'll be the add first method. And also we spoke about how you can access to the middle of the list, like a get node at, given some valid index i. And also we talk about how you can insert a no, uh, insert a new elements into the middle of the list, also given some valid index. And also I gave you some uh, assigned to you some extra exercises of, of other basic operations. So you may just want to make sure you actually attempt the exercises, not just to implement the Java code, but also to write some JUnit test cases to make sure what you whatever you uh, you wrote was actually correct. Right. So that's something I will rely on you to really complete the exercises. And let's now talk about the last operation. Before I do that, I would like to draw some connection quickly. So this was re uh, this is related to some exercise I assigned to you last week. Uh, let me just show you uh, what they are. And it's really important for us to really review or revisit that question I wrote on the uh, on the slide earlier. So let me go to the index, and then the exercise I assigned to you was actually right after the insert uh, right after insert to the front right after that, and the second exercise over there. Right. Remember, I assigned to you to complete. Uh, remove first and also at last. So if you did it, you'll find you will find that both of them are rather straightforward to do, meaning that they are simply just constant, uh, constant like a big O of one uh, performance in to really uh, complete the algorithm. And especially for the at last, you can definitely get uh, to the tell no right away by uh, ex uh, by returning the value of the attribute uh, tell. Right? Remember, we're actually trading uh, space for time. And the question I asked you last time was, the remove last, which is what we're gonna do right now, may not be completed in the same way as the at last. Why? So that's something I would like to start with uh, for us to uh, carry out, carry on with the uh, the, uh, the discussion. All right, let's now move back to that uh, slides to introduce you to the problem for removing from the end. So that'll be to remove the last node of the list. Right, and my hints to you will be as follows. Then, before I actually show you the code, I would like to draw you some very quick picture about at last versus remove last. So these two operations sound to be very similar, but they're actually very different in the context of singly linked list. Okay, so let me uh, just try to do the comparison quickly visually. So we talk about at first, sorry, at last. And then, of course, we have some element e, so which will be maybe string, and also e, right? It's a mutator method, right? That's one. And also, we got another one, which will be to remove the last. In which case, we don't need to pass an input parameter because it's simply to remove the last node from the list. So remove last, and then no parameter over here, right? So we're going to compare these two methods to see why they are different, okay? And for simplicity, why don't I simply assume, let's say this is the head reference of some singly linked list. And that one there is simply uh, pointing to some chain of nodes. And let's not worry too much about the elements over here. So let me say this is pointing to some string, and then this is pointing to the next. All right, and then of course the chain might simply just go on let me just draw a little bit more general case. Okay, it might point to as many nodes as you like in the middle. And then let me draw over here the second last node over here. Okay, so this will be some elements, and this will be the last node, which will be the tail at the same time. Reference aliasing, don't forget. Right? Yeah, the, the size of each node seems to be a little bit different, but they should be the same. Right? It's uh, just drawing. All right, and then this will be pointing to null. All right, and you can think about this is at the same time also the tail. And this is at the same time also the head, right? The first note and also last note over here. And once you draw the diagram, so now are you able to visualize that the running time for at last versus the running time for remove last should be fundamentally different? And let me ask you this question. You can pause the video and tell me which one is more expensive asymptotically. 
Okay, you can now pause the video and think about it. All right, assuming that, assuming that you thought about it, the remove last is much more expensive than the add last. More precisely, as we can see just visually, you can, of course, I'll leave the detail justification to you once you completed the exercise. For the at last method over here, it turns out to be a constant time algorithm, which is very good, constant time, right? It's very efficient and cheap algorithm. On the other hand, for the remove last, which sounds to be very similar operation as the at last would do, but it turns out to be a much more expensive algorithm, which will take linear time, right? So that's something I would like to show to you right away, okay? Why is the at last actually cheap over here? As, since we know, we actually got the reference to the tail already. So that means we can directly actually try to use something like, we can simply say tail is definitely, uh, uh, we can set it uh, next to be the new node that we want to uh, add in, which will come, uh, store the uh, elements E, right? So I can simply say new node. Okay, in that case, I can simply say uh, E will be the new string. And also it's going to be null because that will be the last node. That's all I need to do. And of course, after I have done this, I should really say tell is actually assigned to tell the next. So that's something you were assigned to do earlier. Hopefully this will match your uh, solution, right? So this will be why it is cheap. I'm just gonna put it over here, okay? So this will be for at last. That will be its uh, steps. What about visually? How is it gonna work? Well, it's actually going to, first of all, create this node here. This will be the node that we want to create over here, the new node over here. This will be the new node that we're going to create. And the new node is actually going to point to the element E. So basically, it's going to point to wherever E is pointing to. Maybe just simply some string over here. I'll just put a circle so you will know it's a string value. And then it's actually the next of that is going to be the null because it will ultimately become the, the, the tail of the list. So, so that's why the last node. So the next should be null. And then the last line over here is very important tell the current tell is going to point to wherever the current tell the next the current tell the next oh by the way don't forget we had, we need to set the next of the current tell first right in, in order to do that we're going to say uh the current tell that set next is actually going to point to this new the, this new node over here and then we're going to say tell is assigned to tell the get next right so i think i better write a little bit better that should be get next All right, what would that be? And then, so that's very similar to how you say current is assigned to current that get next in the loops for uh, other uh, singly linked list uh, algorithm. So tell should be assigned to tell that get next. So that means rather than pointing to here, the tell is actually going to point to this particular new node, right? So that'll be set to the new tell. So what we'll do is we're gonna say, rather than pointing to over here, the tell is actually going to point to this node over here. So we have really grown the size of the uh, uh, of the uh, list by one, right? This will be the new node. Of course, you also got to increment the size, right? The size should be incremented as well. All right, so that's the complete solution for at last. And what about the case for the remove last over here? Why is expensive? Are you able to simply use the tell node, for example, the tell reference over here to really remove it? Think about what should be done. If I want to remove this tell node over here, think about the steps over here. Number one, I need to make sure this second last node here, the next reference should be, rather than pointing to this uh, last node that which I want to remove, it should be pointing to null instead. And number two, the tell should really be set to this second last node. But the problem is, how can I know this second last node over here given only the tail? Remember our link node is singly linked, meaning that we only got the reference to the next. 
it would be very good if we if we can somehow get a uh, reference to really point back to your previous note, which is exactly the extension that we also want, will talk about at the end of this week, which is called doubly linked list. But for the singly linked list, we simply just cannot. So the bottleneck for the remove last, let me just point it out, and then I'm going to write down some code uh, to show to you. The bottleneck is really to get to the second last note. It's a very important insight that I will really uh, like to just go over with you on the notes over here. All right. So in order to get to this note, it's simply not possible just given the reference of the tail. You just cannot go back over here. You can only go forward, but you cannot go backwards by using the tail note. All right. So what should we do? Well, in order to really get to the second last note over here, we should really use uh, one of the methods that we implemented earlier, which is the get note at, right? That's something we should do. And to really do this, well, that's something I will actually show to you in the in the code, right? Maybe I wouldn't write it here, okay? But it's going, going to actually somehow get to the second last note over here, and the running time for that is actually going to be linear because it will involve going from the beginning of the head and then go for the get next, get next, all the way to basically uh, the size minus one for the list, right? So that was gonna be linear. So that's why it's really important for you to really see this, right? Okay, so there's, there's a very quick uh, remark about these two operations, which seem very similar. One is about adding some new element to the last as the last node, and the other one is to remove the last node. They seem to be very similar, but due to the singly linked nature, this one here is going to be linear, whereas this one here is going to be constant. You want to know exactly why. All right, enough about the uh, introduction and also to set up the context for our last operation. Let's go back here and let's now try to consider this. You know the problem pretty well already. We want to remove the last node and we want to change the, the, the tail accordingly, right? And the hint will be, uh, will, will, uh, will the use of the tail sufficient? It turns out it is simply not sufficient because just by giving the tail, you're not able to get to the second last note because you only got the reference forward, right? I'm just repeating, reiterating the point just to make sure you really got programmed into your mind, I hope. All right, so and let's now see we if we can actually use the get note at uh, method as a helper method that we implemented earlier. Of course, the uh, the catch would be using this method because you know that uh, this method here involves a loop. So very likely it's going to end up being linear as well, right? That's something we'll see. All right, you can now pause the video and uh, and think about how to implement this method. Of course, you should also go into uh, the simply linked list class. All right. You can now pause the video and think about how you may write a code. Not that many lines of code. You can definitely practice. All right, assuming that you thought about it, let's now go over the code very quickly, okay? And then we'll do some tracing as well. All right, so this will be the method here. Uh, it's gonna be a mutator method returning nothing, and we're gonna just remove the last. That'll be the name. And no input parameters will be necessary. We don't need any extra input. But in the case of add last, you will have to take uh, what the new element is. Uh, for the new node, but for this one here, no. Let's see what we should really implement. The error condition is very important over here. You should want to think about conceptually, if your current list was actually empty, would it really make sense to really try to remove uh, the last element from the empty list? Definitely not. So that's why it would be considered as an error over here, right? If the size is equal to zero. It's very important to see the uh, edge cases, like uh, uh, error conditions. Otherwise, if uh, the size is actually larger, than, uh, not equal to zero, meaning that it's positive, well, in the case where size is simply equal to one, and we only got one note in the list. In that case, we can uh, save some code writing, uh, and then we can simply call the uh, uh, remove first because the first note is the only uh, the first note is at the same time the only note in the list, given that the size is equal to one, right? And of course, for the remove first. I think that was one of the exercises I actually assigned to you uh, earlier. That's something you can also try to do. This one will only take constant uh, amount of time, right? If you want to remove first, how would you do it? Very quickly. If you want to do remove first, what will be the step? Okay, this one here. Well, if I want to remove this particular note, so that means the head will somehow be reassigned to the current head's next 
right? That's basically what we got to do. And that's it. Well, you may also want to get rid of this uh, reference as well to make sure there's no other reference pointing to the second node. And once the second node becomes the head, you want to make sure the only reference pointing to it is the head. So what should we do? Let me uh, write down very quickly for you. Okay. So for the remove first, only a few lines of code that we have to do. And for the remove first, of course, you want to make sure it is the list is not empty, right? So you want to say if the size is actually equal to zero, it's kind of error, right? I'm going to let you program the uh, exception, right? Otherwise, okay, we're going to do something over here. Let me just remove the box, right? Let me box it later, okay? Otherwise, what should we do if the list is not empty? Two steps over here. Number one, we want to set the uh, next of the current head to be null. Actually, the, 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 the order is really important. I actually cannot really set the next to be null first because once I do that, I don't know what to set the head into, right? Because I lost that reference, right? Remember, we also did some similar exercise before. I show you two orders of, uh, of doing uh, things and only one order should really work, right? Let me now write it out. It should be, first of all, I want to make sure the head is actually assigned to the old head dot uh, get next, right? That's something I should do. Well, another way to do it is you can say, I can, I can have a, a local variable that's in the node. Let's say old head is equal to the head. And then I can say head is assigned to head dot get next and then followed by the old head dot set next should be just now okay let's now follow this very quickly right i'm going to create an old head which is going to point to this head over here at the moment, I got aliasing, right? Because I got the head and also old head pointing to the same node. But after that, I'm going to say the second line here, the head rather than pointing to this, is going to point to its current, uh, the current head I get next. It's going to point to the, it's uh, next, which will be over here, right? You can think about line number one, line number two, and also line number three. Line number one, we simply created this old head reference. Line number two, we try to uh, set the head to be its next, right? And line number three, we're going to say old head, which is still pointing to this old uh, this node over here. We want to make sure you will be get uh, you will get you will get garbage collected, and then we're going to set its next to be null over here. All right. So these are the three steps you should really program. All right. So that's something I also would like to discuss with you. Right. That's something you are supposed to complete it as the exercises but now you can see the solution over here all right that's about a remove first uh method and apparently it's constant right you can see one two and three are all about setting references and also getting access to references so that's just constant amount of time all right so that's that'll be the remove first which is constant and in the case where the size is larger than one that means we got at least two nodes uh, in the list. In that case, we should really follow what we said before. You want to get access to the second last node, right? That's what you want to get access to. And in that case, we have to call the get node at method as a helper method. What will be the index for the second last node, right? The last node index should be size minus one. The second last minus one still. So that'll be size minus two. Right, so that's why you see size minus two over here. Right, it's very important to see why this should be size minus two. And also notice that we cannot really simply just combine these two cases together. We simply cannot because in a case where size is equal to one, one minus two will be minus one, which will not be a valid index for get node add. You will just get some illegal argument exception. Right, you can see everything is somehow connected. You want to make sure you understand the logic here. So once we get a second last node, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say second last node that's set now. Right? You can see once we get to somehow the second last node, which is over here, we want to say it's uh, next will be null over here. Right? That's something we got to do. And once we set it to null, and we want to make sure tail is now equal to the second last node. So second last node over here, once we set it's next to be null, we want to make sure the tail 
also is pointing to the second last node, right? And after that, we are done, okay? Very straightforward method, but you want to make sure you understand why we are calling the get node at helper method, where the index should be size minus two, and why it is guaranteed. In the context of this else branch, size minus two is guaranteed to be some valid index, i.e. larger than or equal to zero, all right? And of course, since you're removing some node, you will be, uh, the size should be decremented, right? I'm losing some, <laughs> I'm losing some points over here at the bottom. I'm, I'm gonna fix it when you download the slides. But this one basically is just about a running time. Why it, it is linear, right? Let's now talk about it, okay? All right, let me now trace some code very quickly and then I'll talk about the running time. And now I'll switch back to the slides, okay? Let's say this is still the list that we want to talk about, right? The way to construct a list, you are very familiar. So let's now say we can go up to here, this part over here, it's about constructing a list over here, all right? And then we're gonna make uh, three calls to remove last. That's what we're gonna do, right? Let's do one by one. For the first one here, let's now use maybe green. Uh, let me use the color consistently. So this will be the first call to remove last. The first one, and also the second one, and also the third one. And of course, after these three removals, the list will simply become empty. Currently, we just got three empty notes. Let's see exactly what, how things are gonna happen, all right? Let's now take a look at the first call to the remove last over here. So we're gonna execute remove last over here. And the size currently is equal to three, right? Currently, when we get started, right? That's something you can definitely uh, make, make some notes. Size is not equal to zero. Size is also not equal to one. So we're gonna bypass these branches, right? Evaluate and by bypass. And, go to, and then we're gonna go to the else branch over here. All right, let's now execute this. The second last node is going to be get node at size minus two. Size equal to three, so minus two will be one, right? And then, so we're going to, the second last node is going to be node at uh, index one. You can think about index wise, this node will be index zero, this will be index one, index two, and I assume you already knew how the get node at will work, right? That's something I can assume. And let me just go directly. So the uh, second last note is going to point to index one. This will be the second last note. Second last note, right? That's the note right before the last one, which makes sense. And then we're going to uh, set its next to be null. The second last note that set, set its next to be null. So rather than pointing to this, it's actually going to point to now, over here, and then we're going to set the tail to be uh, the second last node, right? The tail, when we first started, should be pointing to this particular node, right? That's how we started. But now, we want to say the tail, rather than pointing to here, it should be pointing to over here. It should be pointing to this particular, yeah, let me use it also green. It's going to point to the same node. So this will be the tail for now. So as far as the list is concerned, so this will be the first node, and then the second node, oh, sorry, yeah, first node, and then first node, and second node, and that's it, right? And then it's pointing to null. So this node is gone. It will be garbage collected somehow by Java. And of course, you gotta uh, decrement the size. So that'll be, that'll go from three to two. So that'll be the first one. And of course, if you try to evaluate these assertions, it will just be okay, right? You wanna get a node at index zero, is going to be the Allen node. If you get a node at index one, it's going to be the mark node over here, the last node over here. All right, so that's uh, so far so good. Let's now try to trace the remove last second call. How is it gonna work? Similar, so we're, we're still going to, uh, at the moment, the size is actually equal to two, right? We're gonna, buy, uh, we're gonna evaluate this, we're gonna evaluate these two conditions, but it's not, neither zero or one, so we're going to bypass these two. Right? And we're gonna execute the else part over here. And then we're going to, uh, actually going to execute this first of all. So get note at, what would that be? Well, the current size is actually equal to two. So two minus one, 
actually 2 minus 2, sorry, 2 minus 2 is going to be 0. So we want to get to the node at index 0. In this case, the second last node is going to be index 0, which makes sense because the last node is index 1. The second last node should be index 0. So that'll be the second last node. Second last node over here. And then we're going to set its uh, next to be null. So rather than pointing to here, it's now going to point to just null over here. And then the tail is going to be changed again. So the tail is not going to point to over here anymore. So tail is going to point to this index zero node. And we get a decrement of size, which will go from two to one. Right? So far we have removed two nodes from the original list with the three nodes. So that's why the size will just be one. And only index zero is valid. Right? It's uh, pretty straightforward, but I think it's really important for you to visualize exactly what's happening. Later on, as I keep emphasizing, if you want to implement any creative algorithms on the singly linked list, you have to know how to visualize things. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you to keep track, especially about how aliasing really occur, which will help you a lot in uh, making things uh, work. The final one I would like to talk about is the final call, which will somehow, res uh, will somehow cause this list to become empty. Okay, let's see exactly how. So remove last. So we're going to evaluate this condition over here. Line number two is not equal to zero, so we don't really have any error. So bypass this. And we're going to evaluate this. The size indeed is now equal to one. So we're going to simply call remove first. And for remove first, remember I spoke about how to remove first over here, right? That's something I assume you also study that, right? Let's see exactly what's going to happen. So for remove first, what we're going to do is we're going to First of all, have some old hat pointing to this, the current hat. And then we're going to say old hat. Uh, we're going to say hat is assigned to hat.next. So hat is actually going to be assigned to hat.next, which is actually null, right? Hat is going to be assigned to hat.next, which is null over here. I, sorry, I pointed to the wrong position. It should be here. Right. So uh, after that one, so head is actually going to be pointing to just now over here. And then we also need to make sure over here. Remember, we're going to make sure all head are set next to be now. So all head that are set next to be now It's already now anyway. All right. But it's just a standard procedure. After this, we also need to decrement the size from one to zero. So the resulting list that we have is is this. Let me just uh, do one more annotation if that helps, right? Think about the consequence of each of the removal. After the first removal, what we got was this particular list. This was the consequence of the first removal. Okay, first removal. And this was the consequence of the second removal over here, which will be just got one node left over here. And after the third removal, we got exactly just the head pointing to now over here. So that's the consequence of this, uh, of this. So we are shrinking the list size, which is not surprising. All right. All right. That's about a complete tracing about having three removals over here. Right. You definitely want to make sure you understand not just about remove uh, removal from some non-empty list and it's still not empty. You want to think about how you can uh, remove from some non-empty list and the resulting list becomes empty. That's also important to uh, visualize. Finally, what's the running time for this remove last algorithm? Right. If you take a look at the code structure over here, we can just approximate the running time. This part over here is just about throwing something like returning something. So it's constant. Right. And also this condition over here is about removing the first, which we knew it's actually a uh, constant time, also bigger of one. And this part over here, it, as we'll see, is going to be dominated by this method call over here. And so you can see this is a dominating performance over here, right? So this part over here, as we knew from before, this is going to be big O of N. So this will be the dominating, the dominating line for the performance of the entire algorithm. And what is that? It should be big O of N. So that will turn out to be the running time 
for remove last because we need to get to the second last node. That's really the most expensive step, which will be more expensive than any other line, right? So all the other lines over here, as you can see, it's just about setting some reference and also uh, updating some integer variable, which is cheap, only a constant time. Alrighty, and let's now move on to some final exercises I would like to assign to you.